Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well, welcome to another video. It is Friday morning and yesterday was a busy day in the true crime world. We had a press conference from the Quinton Simon case, not terribly impressed that they don't appear to know where Leilani is, but we'll leave that one for now because very late in the evening my time, just before I was about to go to bed actually, the news came out that Kylie Rodney's autopsy report and uh, toxicology screen had been released. So I've had a chance this morning to go through the report. So I, I want to give you my take on it. Let me just be very clear. I'm not a medical professional, but I do understand autopsy reports. I've read a lot of them and uh, the terminology is fully consistent across different reports. So let's go through it, shall we? Now, the cause of death is drowning and the manner of death is accident. So this was an accidental drowning. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Those people who think that this is some kind of cover up and there's foul play and da 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 da. Well, you're going to believe that regardless of the evidence in front of you. In my opinion, this is the right decision. In my opinion. You can disagree, you can disagree all day and all night for me, but the totality of the evidence leads me to believe that this was an accidental drowning. We know that her car went into Prosser Reservoir at 12.33 and was completely submerged, so much so that the camera at Alder Hill, which is 2.3 miles away, could no longer see the headlights, and that was 12.34 and 42 seconds. So when a forensic pathologist does an autopsy, they do take into account the condition and the circumstances of which the body was found. So the fact that she was found in a lake submerged in a vehicle is a contributing factor to the fact that this was deemed an accidental drowning. But it's also a decision of exclusion because when we go through the autopsy report, we see no evidence of external or internal trauma other than that consistent with moderate to severe decomposition. Now, there's actually two reports here. There's a report from the reporting officer, Jason Mackey, who examined Kylie's body and the, the scene once um, the car had been removed. And then there's a forensic pathologist report, including toxicology. So we need to go through both of those. So this is the incident report from the scene. I arrived on scene at approximately 1900 hours, which is 7 p.m. FBI agents, FBI crime scene technicians, Placer County Sheriff's Office deputies, California Highway Patrol officers, Truckee Police Department officers, and detectives from the Nevada County Sheriff's Office were all near a tow truck. He spoke to a detective who advised me that law enforcement divers had hooked the tow truck's winch to a vehicle under the water and were assisting with the recovery of the vehicle. Of course, this was August 21st, found by Adventures with Purpose. The vehicle was turned and then pulled out. We all saw that footage. I waited until the vehicle was removed from the water and I was given permission to begin my investigation. Now, the body position for me is irrelevant in this instance because what we see under the water is different to what the coroner would have seen on top of the water because they turned the vehicle. Anyway, there was a white female decedent located in the rear cargo department of the silver 2013 Honda CRV and there's the license plate. The right leg of the decedent was against the pillar of the back seat and resting near the headrest. The remainder of the decedent was behind the seats and not visible from outside of the vehicle. She's been upturned. They shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done that. The fact that she was found in the cargo hatch, I think, is the important thing here. So the body was removed under my supervision by FBI agents and crime scene technicians, placed in a body bag and uh, visually inspected, the bag was sealed. No items were removed from the decedent's person and the remains were later transported by Truckee Tahoe Mortuary directly to Placer County Morgue. So there was some signs of 
bloating, lividity and decomposition. Not pleasant, but we expected that because she's been in the water since 12.33 on the 6th. So this was then end of this guy's report and it was then forwarded to the Chief Coroner Sergeant Clinkenbeard. And then on receiving both the incident report from the first responding officers and the autopsy, I have recently reviewed the pathologist's final report of autopsy, which listed the cause of death in the case as drowning. There's no other significant contributory conditions listed. I conferred with Detective Sonia, and he told me there was no indication of foul play regarding a criminal investigation into the death of Kylie. The manner of death in this case has been determined to be accidental, so case closed. Here's the toxicology, positive findings. This is the thing that we've, I guess, all been waiting for. Ethanol, which is alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, cortinine, which is a, um, a metabolite of nicotine, and then delta-9 THC. So the alcohol here is significant. It's 88, which under normal conditions, as per this Science Direct report here, if in life... 80 milligrams per deciliter is the legal limit of driving in the United States. Some impairment of driving skills may be present in some individuals. You, you might expect that in someone of Kylie's size because she was very slim, she was very young. Um, so you might see some driving impairment. She's just over, so obviously if she's closer to 120 milligrams per deciliter, then you'd get more impairment. But the problem is that post-mortem blood alcohol concentration can't be trusted because as the body decomposes, that decomposition has a significant influence on post-mortem ethanol concentration. It's impossible to know how much of the ethanol found in Kylie's body at autopsy is a result of her alcohol consumption in life and how much of it is a result of her decomposition in death. So I think what we can perhaps conclude is that Kylie wasn't terribly drunk because if some of that was a result of decomposition, it's likely that in life her blood alcohol level would not have been over the legal drink drive limit. She might have even been completely sober. What does that tell us about the night of the party as recorded by her friends, namely Sammy, who said she was so drunk, Sammy had to get another ride home. Absolute nonsense. Kylie wasn't overly drunk. She wasn't. But we do have a positive THC. We don't have the level, but could have impaired her driving ability. THC is the active ingredient in cannabis. So that would have made her feel stoned and it could be perhaps that that made her confused where she stopped or at least slowed down to a crawl before making that final turn and making that wrong turn, turning left instead of turning right. So is it the THC? We can certainly say Kylie certainly wasn't as drunk as... Sammy thought maybe Sammy was just mistaken let's give her the benefit of the doubt but we know Sammy lied about the timing getting her call from Kylie at 12 36 Elsa seeing her after 12 40 they're either both mistaken about the time or they're lying for whatever reason but not because of foul play not because of what they might have done to Kylie as we thought towards the beginning of this case I was Side-eyeing Sammy really badly. You know, there was something going on there. Now, whether Kylie had taken parts in these fight clubs, whether Kylie had been spiked, it doesn't look like she's been spiked. It doesn't. There was no positive results for things like benzos or barbiturates that would have been consistent with being spiked. But no, none of that. Moving on. External examination. So the subject is normocephalic, which means that she's... Um, got a normal head, no apparent external head trauma. So we've got some decomposition here. 
uh, which I'm not going to read. A little bit of discharge from the right ear, but that's all due to decomposition. No external apparent injuries to do with blunt force trauma, penetrating injuries. So no signs that she'd been beaten, no signs that she'd been stabbed, no signs that she'd been shot. Now, because of the uh, skin decomposition, any superficial bruises or anything like that would probably not have shown up. But superficial bruising, if she'd taken part in a fight, let's say, would not have resulted in her death. The fact that there's no signs of head trauma, both internally or externally, is, um, is good enough for me. Let's look at the internal examination. Normal heart, normal cardiovascular system, respiratory system, normal lung size. Uh, there's prominent gas tissue formation, which is uh, distorting the architecture of both lungs. Uh, the larynx, trachea and bronchi are normal. No apparent airway obstruction. So something wasn't stuffed in her mouth, let's say, to suffocate her. All normal. Normal genital urinary system, no signs of SA, and she ha she was on a period, so she wasn't pregnant. So that answers that question. Everything else normal. Skeletal system, no acute skeletal injury found on gross or radiographic examination. So just eyeballing the skeleton shows no signs, and um, it was x-rayed and no signs okay so she she had a a wrist surgery on a previous occasion that's obviously shown up reflection of the scalp reveals the right maroon staining of uh, scalp tissues predominantly on the right side consistent with lividity under the effects of decomposition the skull is intact normal in thickness so the decomposition of the brain but no evidence of hemorrhage so a hit to the head would have shown up on the brain no sign of that. So in conclusion, accidental drowning is based on the circumstances of which Kylie was found. And in the absence of anything else, in the absence of signs of foul play on her body of any kind, whether that's skeletal, whether that's signs of suffocation, signs of strangulation, you know, there'd be some signs on her body, but no, nothing, no signs of a beating, no signs of head trauma, no signs of being spiked, moderate alcohol consumption, THC is relevant, could be the thing that confused her, she thought she was okay to drive, she, she thought, I've not drunk that much, I'm okay to drive, but the THC hit her, that's the conclusion, so the case is closed. The only thing I'm waiting for now, I want to hear what the accident report has to say. I want to hear how fast she was going when she hit the water. Just out of my curiosity, really. But as far as I'm concerned, all things considered, this case is closed. It's an accident. It's unfortunate. It's terrible that a girl was so vibrant, full of life, had a whole life ahead of her, has been just taken away from the world. And um, it's so very sad, but sometimes an accident is just an accident, guys. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I know there's going to be comments to this. I've been Michelle. Hope you're well. I'll see you in the next video. It's goodbye from Miss Tillington and Miss Cassie Springer. Bye, guys. Good girl.